Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video and my name is Dale. It's that time again for my monthly solar update. So where I talk to you about the performance of my solar PV system here in the UK. If you're new to this series of the Spectrum Geeks videos, please click the little tab up the top here and that'll give you an overview of the solar setup we have, how many solar panels we have, what make they are, what batteries we have and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, if you're new to it, click that. If you're one of the regulars, thanks so much for watching as usual. And let's kick off with the solar stats for July 2022. Okay, so it's been pretty warm in July and uh, we've had some super scorching days. All the grass is completely brown and dead and ruined in my garden. I wonder how it is in yours. As always, I'm interested to hear how your solar PV system has performed as well. So leave a, a comment in the comment section, tell me what um, size array you have and how things have performed. That'd be really interesting to share and for others to compare and contrast. So in terms of our solar PV system for the month of July, we generated 1.05 megawatt hours. So pretty good. Um, if you know about solar panels, you'll see, yes, you need sunlight, but also the performance degrades a little bit if it's too hot. So as you know, in July, we've had some of the hottest days on record here in the UK. So that does impact performance a little bit. Um, we obviously had a little bit of uh, travel as well this month, so we did export a little bit more than we normally do, and we exported 170 kilowatt hours of electricity back to the grid. But um, in terms of how we operate our two electric cars, we do a little bit of um, water heating as a top up overnight. Not that we need it, but I like to keep my wife happy. Um, so we obviously still do import from the grid, and we imported 370 kilowatt hours. So 30% of our total consumption did come from the grid. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, how much our electricity bills cost in a moment. We're still with Optimus Go and um, yeah, give you a bit more breakdown on why. I think that's a good thing. If you're considering moving to uh, Optimus Energy, then uh, you can use the referral code and on the referral link. Uh, and both of us both get £50 credit to our bill. So in terms of our best day for the month of July, it was on the 11th of July, and we generated 56.43 kilowatt hours of electricity. I think, I'm not sure that still beats my best day, but it's up there. Uh, I don't think my system's ever gonna hit 60 kilowatts in a day. That would be, um, or 60 kilowatt hours in a day. That'd be awesome, but we tend to be in the 56, 57. I think 58 might be the best we ever had, I'm not sure, but but up there. Um, our highest export day was on the 29th of July. We were away uh, in our Hero Camper on that day and we exported 21.07 kilowatt hours to the grid. And the highest import day that we had was on the 1st of July, so right at the beginning of the month. Um, and we imported 32.25 kilowatt hours from the grid. Um, one of the reasons why we have the import is, as I kind of mentioned at the beginning, we do have, I think, two hours every night where we heat uh, the hot water from the grid whilst it's on the off-peak of Octopus Go. And still a majority of our car charging will happen um, off-peak, because obviously it's not always sunny in the UK. And we, whereas we do try and maximize the solar where we can, there still is a requirement for us to charge from the grid if we've got kind of longer journeys that um, the solar can't fully compensate for during the week. So that's why we have the grid import. So obviously talking of grid, um, let me talk to you about uh, our energy bills for the month of July. So gas, we didn't use any gas. We only have gas for heating in the house. So again, it's nice and hot right now. So the house doesn't need heating, but it still costs us £8.44 and that's just basically the standard charge cost for the month. And then for our electricity, as mentioned, obviously we did have to import 30% of our energy from the grid, and that cost us £36.19. And of that, um, £7.78 was just in standing charge costs. However, on the Octopus Go tariff that I'm on, um, I pay 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour for off-peak energy and we try and maximize as much as we can in terms of using off-peak, whether that's be charging the cars, heating hot water, everything. And we actually averaged um, 7.84 pence per kilowatt hour in the month of 
July. So we actually only used 10.9 kilowatt hours of energy from the grid during peak time. So we're doing a fantastic job of offsetting uh, energy usage, obviously outside of the solar stuff, to maximizing the off peak uh, and reducing our bills. And we are gonna take another look to see what we can do to reduce our energy consumption. Um, obviously with energy prices continuing to rise, um, I think we should take steps to tighten our belts a little bit and uh, try and reduce that um, energy usage down even more. So still on the subject of money, the other thing I talk about every month is how is our payback pot going in terms of paying off the purchase and the, of the solar and battery system. So uh, as I mentioned every month, we still got some of the feeding tariff we got in right at the end. So we get a little bit of money paid for our generation deemed export. And obviously then anything that we've generated on solar we've used, we haven't had to buy that um, from the grid source. That gives us a saving as well. So for the month of July, um, we get paid £43.79 for the generation from the feeding tariff. Then our deemed export, so regardless of whether we export or not, we get paid uh, for 50% of what we generated, and we get paid £29.24 in July for our deemed export. And then for that um, 1.05 megawatt hours that should be generated, we didn't use all of it, um, but for the bit that we did use, that would be the equivalent of £270.86 uh, for electricity on our peak energy uh, cost, which is about 30.78 30, 30 pence, I think, at the moment. Obviously, that's still pretty good compared to some tariffs like up to 40p now, based on before, uh, well, we've obviously fixed before those more recent price increases, which is good. So that means a total in July of £343.89 pence went back into our solar payback pot and it'll be September that we've had um, our solar PV system for five years and I'll be doing my five-year update to see how is the payback going for our solar PV and battery system so far. Obviously with these increasing energy prices it's really helping uh, the payback maths. Obviously not good um, for the pocket but it does mean that obviously it makes even more sense to have these solar uh, battery and everything just it just has helped a little bit if you can afford it. Um, right, so just to finish up on is obviously how we've used uh, a lot of that uh, generation. So obviously the house is using a portion of it, but then we have um, heating hot water from surplus solar, charging electric cars and charging up that power wall. So if we look at the Zappi first, so we put 341.66 kilowatt hours of energy into our two electric cars in July. 50% of that, 57% of that even came from solar. So 192.93 kilowatt hours of solar surplus went into charging electric cars. And then we pulled 43%, so 148.73 kilowatt hours from the grid for car charging. And then for heating the hot water, so we put 171.80 kilowatt hours of energy into heating hot water. But 67% of that came from solar surplus, so about 115 kilowatt hours. And then 33%, which is around 56.8 um, kilowatt hours of energy came from the grid for heating hot water. And then finally for our Tesla Powerwall 2, we managed to utilize 288.3 kilowatt hours of energy out of the Powerwall 2 into you know, powering our house essentially when the sun has gone away. And in terms of that energy, where that came from, so 71% of that came from solar surplus, so around 204, 205 kilowatt hours, something like that. And then 29% of it came from kind of topping up from the grid during off peak again, which is around 83, 84 kilowatt hours. So I hope that gives you some insight into uh, the solar PV system here in the UK. I still think solar is one of the best things I ever bought. Um, and we'll definitely do it again. So if you're researching and thinking about solar, does it work in the UK? It does. This gives you a rough idea of how it performs in these nice summer months. But that's it. Again, share your um, performance in the comments. Ask any questions you have in the comments. If you want to, you can also join the Spectrum Geeks Discord channel. It's completely free. I speak to myself and other members of the Spectrum Geeks community about technology, geekery, solar stuff, cars, anything. We talk about all sorts of stuff, gaming. Feel free to drop in and join in the conversation and start new conversations. That'd be great. But until the next one, take care of yourself. And that's it. Goodbye for now.